Today is a beautiful day for science. Currently, we're seeing a lot of really interesting uh, things going on. Uh, one of the things in particular, of course, we have that dual chronomass ejection that's occurring, both from filament eruptions on the southwest. Uh, while we don't have anything on core stereo ahead or Lasco Soho, not yet anyways, we can take a look at it on Gong. And that, uh, from what I can see on it so far, we are not going to be expecting any of that to be impacting Earth. But that doesn't stop it from being quite beautiful. Ooh. All right, there we go. Once again, I got myself on the TV so I can see it large. <laughs> 4K. Um, anyways, uh, the Kong, 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 Kong. There we go. Yeah. So we have here currently two CMEs that are occurring, and here you can see the faint outline of those filaments, both on the Gong, and as they both disperse. Very lovely. Let's take a look at a different station. See if another station's got a better view of it. There's gong all uh, a gong station all around the world uh, to cover a 360 view or not 360 a 24-hour view of the sun despite whether night or day because these are actually on the ground. one all right and <coughs> hmm. here we go so chili is the answer we got chili and they have a good view of it because one of the the southern one is still ongoing eruption it has not fully erupted it's still progressing outward as a chronomass ejection but we can see the other one has dispersed and here we can see it very nicely so here's one of them and here's the other and we can see also that there was a uh, the connectivity of this filament caused some heat and uh, plasma movement over here all the way to this end very nice. So that would be most likely caused due to uh, any loops that were intermingling among it or the actual uh, plasma that had foothold had a foothold in within the uh, photosphere of the sun causing that. There we go. These are the two current CMEs that we're seeing. We're still seeing this filament right here that this was the partial, what well, most of it anyways erupted and caused that solar storm we had uh, just recently. And that was like a G4.9. We almost had a G5. It just didn't quite peak the scale. So that was probably the biggest solar storm we've had since about 2005. But taking a look at this right here, we can see this current uh, filament still, it, it moves a little bit, but it's still pretty stable. The filament I've been watching currently is this one here. It has shown some movement, and there it is right there, actually. It's, it looks like it might be doing it now. There we go. So if we watch this filament, yeah, it's, it's erupting now as well. So we have another filament erupting in the north, just above the uh, equator. So this is why it's good to use multiple tools, so we can take a look at anything we might have missed by looking at one particular type of imagery. And uh, let's take a closer look at that particular event. So, of course, with that singly ionized helium, uh, 304 is one of the best angstroms to view these particular events. And this, like I said, this is one of the POIs, points of interest, that I've had uh, since the... Uh, since it showed up on 
the sun or sun, the earth facing disk which is the portion of the sun that we can see from earth now just because a filament erupts doesn't mean it's going to become a cme and just because it's a cme doesn't mean it's going to become an icme now the difference is a filament erupting can just be pulled through the corona and crash down onto the uh, the sun as you know weather so to speak for the sun if it does become a CME, it can come back down as plasma rain, once again, weather. But a CME just means corona mass ejection, making it beyond the corona. What we are more concerned about is something called an ICME, which is an interplanetary corona mass ejection. It's a very nitpicky word. You can use CME to associate the same for either way. Just, you know, most people are familiar with CME. But a uh, ICME, interplanetary corona mass ejection, means that it's going to, well, it be interplanetary, sort of like intercontinental, interstate, you know, things of that nature. It just refers to the fact that it's going to be hitting beyond its own uh, trajectory. But here we are. Look at that movement on this right here. That is beautiful. And here's the, here it is. Yep, so we do have a CME that occurred there. Now, I didn't see anything on Soho or Lasco, uh, Soho Lasco or uh, Stereo Core. So it could be that it didn't make it beyond, or it could be that it's still too early to be on the imagery for that, being that this does look very slow moving. Very, very interesting. I love the uh, the prominence dance that occurs on the rim as well here. This, uh, for me, this is a telltale sign. Whenever I see activity like this on the rim, <clears throat> it doesn't always mean that we're going to be getting a high flaring active area, but it does mean that there's a lot of electromagnetic energy that's breaking through the photosphere. And what that means is the plasma is building up into the chromosphere, or the chronosphere, and then the chromosphere. The, the chronosphere is the upper atmosphere. The chromosphere is the lower atmosphere, much like the sky for Earth. You know, we have a lower and upper atmosphere. So the photosphere is the surface, and as we go up into the chromosphere, we see a lot of this lower activity, these filaments just riding along here low, these uh, little loops and whatnot. A lot of our A and B class flares mostly uh, come from these little areas. But then we go into the, the coronasphere, and that's where we start to see uh, where this plasma is far reaching. And some of these prominences can be hundreds of thousands of kilometers into space. So we have these, these prominences just reaching way, way out there beyond the, uh, the, the chronosphere. And that's what we're seeing here. And what that means is that the energy that's pushing through the photosphere is so electromagnetically buoyant, meaning pushing away and up and out, that it is breaking not only through the photosphere, not only through the chromosphere, but also through the chronosphere. And as that occurs, it becomes less and less stable. It expands more and more because it's being compressed by gravity and electromagnetivity uh, because it's all ionic. It's all, every single bit of the sun is plasma. It's charged. Everything has a charge. And it is trying to expand and push away from one another until it has... Uh, proper space. So right now it's a collisional plasma. And the further it gets from the sun, the further it gets closer to its desired state of being a non-collisional plasma. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. And as it reaches that state, it becomes less electromagnetically buoyant and less eruptive and explosive and more you know, static. And if it doesn't have enough energy to break free from that point. It comes down as plasma rain as it disperses that uh, energy and gets recompressed into collisional plasma and then causes all other kinds of problems including development of new regions, regions that already have developed to become active and a lot more in flares and the activity that we see increasing as time goes. And that's exactly what we're watching. So whenever I see the sun or rim, short story, <laughs> taking that long story and putting it to a short, uh, whenever we see this on the rim, what that means is that we have more activity on the way. This shows an incline of solar activity uh, upcoming. 
So that's basically all that I said comes down to meaning this is a good sign of increased solar activity. When we look at the other rim, the western rim, and the way it is on the sun is the east and west is the opposite because as you would imagine it's a mirror effect. We're not looking, we're looking at the sun uh, from here. So our west is their east, you know, if you were to stand on the sun. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. So the western rim, you'll see there's far less activity. There's still activity going on. We even have uh, an eruption here that pushes, it doesn't even quite become a CME, it just becomes a, uh, uh, an internal atmosphere kind of solar act event. And that's why you'll see a lot of times also that, well, there's a, there's reaching into the corona and beyond. But um, you'll see a lot of times that's also why plasma reacts a little differently and we see plasma do strange things. Like say for instance, you'll see an eruption and you see it do a reverse and sometimes an odd flow. It's because it's all positive and negative charges. It's all ionic, it's all, it's all charged. But this right here, it's much more calm, even though we have these regions. We have a lot of filament movement showing that there's, as we get to this point about right here, a lot more filament. There's that one eruption. Here's the other. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, so we have a lot of filament movement, but we don't have a lot of eruptivity and prominence reaching far out like we do here. And what that tells me is a lesser active area is rotating off, a more active area is rotating facing Earth. And we can also see signs of that by looking at this region here. Let me pull a somnotic map just to ensure I have the right region name in mind. Because I get uh, sometimes confused. I'd rather be correct than just guessing. Yeah, let's make that a little bit larger. 32, by the way there, Mark. Uh, 3285, yeah, okay, good. They apparently, okay, yeah. So 3285, and the new region just south of it, 3288, they have named it. 3288 has developed very quickly. I didn't think it was going to survive uh, because of its proximity and because of the overlying plasma and the expansion that's already occurring at 3285. It's elongating. We can see the northern portion, the, lead, the leading northern portion of that 3285 actually extending outward, giving more space. So as such, we see that, and the best way to show you this, again, is on the HMIBC. It shows it very beautifully, absolutely beautifully. And we'll see it just sprout up right here. And just like a very rapid onset, we have these loops that break through the photosphere and create umbras. And the umbra is the darker regions of a sunspot. So when you have a darker region on a sunspot, what that means is magnetic field lines have broke through that photosphere, photosphere, and they're now going through the chromosphere and chronosphere, reconnecting somewhere. When you see the dark blue, that's positive energy. That's positive connection. When you see the red, that's the, dark, that's the, the strong negative connection. So we can tell that most of these loops are reaching here and here. And this developed very quickly. And this causes some alarm and an increase of what I expected from this region, in these regions. And I would say that it is possible that we could see an inclination of activity from here, escalation of activity from here. Very likely to see some mid-level and maybe even low-level M's, mid-level C's and low-level M's, possibly as this progresses. Because this negative here, being in the proximity of the following positive for 3285, it's very likely that this proximity is going to start causing some conflict. And if we look at 171, we can look at those loops and see what I'm talking about and watch it happen. So we'll see that the regions start to develop. We'll see these loops are just nice and lovely here. 3285 is elongating slowly. This one starts building up. We see a lot of those little small... Uh, high B class, very, very low C class flares, and then you'll see some of these loops developing southward. And what's happening is it's stealing those loops connections from 3285, weakening its positive connection and negative connections, messing it up the uh, 
the organization that it has. So what this is going to give us is an increased heightened chance of a uh, flaring activity. But more importantly, if it continues to develop this nature, this is where you get your more severe proton events. Because we now have two regions conflicting over that connectivity. It is very possible that we can see an electron event come from this kind of scenario which is going to be your surface changes, an explosive eruptive change that causes the surface, the photosphere, to become erupted and disrupted by this activity. So that's something to keep an eye on. That's, that's now definitely a POI, point of interest. Well, it wasn't before, but now it's, it's more of the, my number one, as it were. But once again, looking at 171, which is the, uh, showing the magnetic field lines, that are breaking through the photosphere into the coronasphere, which is the coronasphere is the upper atmosphere, uh, we can see these loops going well beyond and far reaching. And this is what I was referring to, a lot of electromagnetic energy. To be able to reach this far, to have that far reaching of activity, it requires a lot of energy that we don't see underneath it all, that we can't see. So in order to develop this right here, there is something much more powerful happening beneath it. So it's very likely we're going to start seeing, <clears throat> pardon me, it's very likely we're going to start seeing some uh, regions develop uh, as this area rotates in the view and regions that are already there to develop further, much like we're seeing 3288 as it steals the energy and loop connections from 3285 kind of a parasitic region there. <laughs> so expect uh, an increase in flaring activity, an increase in the x-ray flux, uh, slight chance I would say right now of an increased chance of a proton event and the I would expect the bar for the flux to increase probably with the low level flaring and energy being released probably by uh, to C1 and C2 uh, on average. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that steadily increase as time goes based upon the current solar activity. And I forgot. What I was doing was going to pull and show the corona mass ejection that occurred in front and center. And here it is. <laughs> I got distracted by the other activity that's ongoing. It's always so much happening beautiful here we are and there it, uh, there it goes right there so that just happened several hours ago beautiful CME front and center uh, it's very faint don't see uh, I didn't see anything on Soho and Lasco but we could take another look just to ensure so I'll pull that up here really quickly and we can take a look at it together and see what is happening here I got Buffalo Springfield in my head if anyone's familiar with Buffalo Springfield All right, and this is a nice tool that I, I bother the professionals at NASA and USGS and ESA and so forth quite a lot and ask them questions and ask them what kind of tools they use to procure information and utilize the data to figure out what's happening. And that's where I was given savvy to this particular uh, ability to actually start measuring and understanding the CME activity as it uh, makes it onto these disks that are, well, our satellites that give us a sort of a pre-telling and forewarning of solar storms and solar weather. How to better understand them and use them. 
All right, let's take a look. See if we can see anything faint. We're looking at uh, C2 because um, this has this is a little bit closer, a little smaller scope. We can see things that are a little more faint that won't show as nicely on C3. Yeah, there's that event, but that's on the far side. It's not what I'm looking for. I don't see anything. This only goes to 1848. May not be uh, updated far enough. And I think that we're pretty much in the same boat on stereo. Is that event? That's not the right one. Okay, okay, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, there it is, indeed. It's very faint, but it's there. So we do have a CME that does look to be Earth impacting. Uh, very minor, may not even notice it happening. It has a northward motion. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up on here. When Soho updates, we'll be able to see it a lot better. But uh, let me show you right here. So this 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 event right here is on the far end. This is on the rim. We can start just now seeing the event of the two filaments that are erupting on the south. But if you look, you'll see very faintly, oh, wrong thing, a northward push. And I think it cuts into about halfway of this one based upon how these waves are, are moving. So it looks to me like we have this right here. But it's very, very faint. Let's go to the next. Yeah. We can see the extension of it is actually right here. This is the peak point it looks like. So let's go back. Watch as it goes inward. Yep. So we can see it. And then it's outward motion. Very faint, but there it is. So yeah, it's, it's northward moving. It may not impact us at all. It's northward and slightly westward it looks like but it could be being masked by the larger event that's happening on the eastern rim. Uh, currently, I would say that this event, most likely it's too small to even matter either way, uh, but it appears to be northward and westward. So I would not be too, con too concerned about that at all. The event that's happening with the dual filament eruptions, <clears throat> pardon me, this is it right here. And it is very southward, very westward. We're not looking at anything from this. I don't think we're even going to see a glancing blow. I don't think it's even chance for a glancing blow in this event. At least not yet. We don't see the second filament eruption yet. We only see the primary, but the primary eruption, the first eruption, is the one that's further north. So it's unlikely that the one that's further north is going to erupt closer or further from us than the one to the south of it. It's possible, and uh, I will double check it, but I will say it's highly unlikely. All right, I think that about covers any of the updates, but this is why it's beneficial to look at other tools rather than just the, the quick, easy ones. That gong, if it wasn't for looking at gong, I would have not seen that other CME. And that, I do believe, will impact us, even though it's ever so slight. And we'll take a look at it a little bit slower here. But we'll see that CME happen right there. There it goes. So this CME, it's only a partial eruption. It leaves the, the south, southern portion of that uh, filament intact. You can barely see it. It's very faint, but it is still there. Uh, it's very likely that the northern portion was a little more energetic, lifted off, 
and loops or maybe even just a foothold was too powerful for the southern portion to break free. But we do see that this right here, this is a northward but uh, slightly westward. So we're seeing it slightly along this line here. Good chance it misses us. Uh, good chance it's a glancing blow. Hard to tell because it's being masked by the activity that's occurring on the eastern end that's uh, making it difficult to see exactly how far southward it is on the, uh, the eastern end. But there we go. All right, so that's the uh, current solar activity update. There is an update about Canada. Currently, they're dealing with some uh, solar, uh, not solar storms, uh, ice storms, weather storms. They're having a lot of issues with uh, heavy lines and, 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 of course, you know, the ground cover and whatnot. And it's making it also difficult to recover and to fix any infrastructure for the electric uh, grid. So they're having approximately 2.5 to 3 million uh, Canadian citizens dealing with power outages to power fluctuations. Uh, so if you have any Canadian friends, keep them in mind. And uh, yeah, so that about covers it. So cheers and science on.